DC Multiverse! G'day super friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, I'm Brad the DC Universe Geek and today I present to you my review of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Green Lantern John Stewart action figure based on his look from DC Rebirth. At least, that's what the card says, although... <laughs> I ain't never seen Jon Stewart ever have a suit that looks quite like this. But we'll get into that in just a second. First, let's take a little peek at the trading card, which is the exact same image as the back of the package, with the back, as usual, having a short data file about the character in question. In this case, Jon Stewart. Feel free to pause to read if you'd like, and if not, we'll just stick this in the pile and take a gander at the figure and its two accessories. Three, I suppose, if you count the action figure stand that they all come with. And technically four, if you count this chest piece that slips over top of Jon Stewart's shoulders. Here, first, let's just look at the actual figure before we look at all of the accessories for old Johnny Boy. So the basic figure sends all the rigmarole of the backpack, the Gatling gun, and the football-style shoulder pads is actually something very unique. Some people aren't really big fans of when Todd decides to gussy up the basic look of a figure, straying away from their more classic appearance to something that would be a lot more detailed and, and visually interesting to look at. But I think with a character like Jon Stewart, it really, really works. I mean, he is a Green Lantern, a space cop, that is, and so you really wouldn't expect a Green Lantern to be flying around space in tights or something like that. This does seem kind of appropriate. I mean, let's face it, this would be absolute hell for an artist to have to draw every time they sketch Jon Stewart in the Green Lantern comic, but as far as figures go, all of this detail seems to make sense. I mean, the basic look of Jon Stewart has been maintained with the green boots, and then you've got the black overall bodysuit, you have those green wrist guards, the gauntlets, and then you have the green right here across his chest with that very unique to Jon Stewart bodysuit. I will say I do kind of wish that the lantern symbol on my Jon Stewart was painted a little bit better. And just the way that this guy's body fits together is, is really weird. Like, I'm not complaining about it weird, but, but it's weird. You've got his lower half down here, and then you've got this midsection that's like a soft rubber, and it hangs down, and it, if you didn't really know that it was another piece, you might be able to actually not notice it's a separate piece, and then you have the torso on top of that. This is a very interesting way of tackling the articulation with this guy, which we'll get to in a second, but first, let's look at this guy's face sculpt. It's probably one of the best Jon Stewart face sculpts I've seen to date. This looks exactly, exactly how I imagined Jon Stewart to look, and the paint apps look tidy enough. I'm not really going to complain about any kind of bits of paint slop. I always try to keep in mind that this is a $20 figure. At least $20 if you live in America. And look, Jon Stewart's ring actually has a little tiny green lantern symbol right there on the front. So overall, visually, this is a very impressive figure. Now for John's first accessory, what I call his football shoulder pads, well, they certainly look really cool. Clearly this is some sort of an armor construct for John Stewart. You got the little lantern symbols right there on the shoulder pauldrons. This whole thing has been sculpted really quite nicely. And I like how the little circle right there is perfect for his symbol to fit through. Not gonna lie, mine came a little bit wonky in the package, but with a little bit of boiled water, I was able to reshape it, and voila, it fits perfectly. It sticks directly to his chest, it hugs his back like it's supposed to, and the lantern symbol comes right through that hole on the front. Now John's got a little hole on his back too, and that's because he comes with a backpack. Oh boy, which way is... Which way is up? I'm not sure. Hmm. No, that doesn't look right. What about that? Is that correct? Hang on. Let me consult the online images. Mm-hmm. It's as I thought. The great big round tubular bit goes right on the top of this backpack, which is exactly what I thought it was supposed to look like. Like this? This just screams of, I'm upside down! This definitely looks more like it's supposed to. And then, of course, we come to probably the coolest accessory for any Green Lantern figure ever. This energy construct badass looking locked and loaded and ready to go Gatlin gun. This thing looks like it means serious business. And the detail on this is just 
sculpted to the nines. This is this is quite impressive. It would be even more impressive if there was a little switch on it and it lit up, but but I like this a lot. You got your secondary handle here for him to hold on to, and then you got your trigger handle right here. This this is a fantastic accessory. Mmm, yeah, not bad at all. This is this is perfect for John Stewart. I know that he was a sniper back in the military, but this this Gatlin gun, this thing looks really fantastic. And it's just ever so slightly reminiscent of the first large gun that we were given with a John Stewart figure in the multiverse with the animated John Stewart. And I know a lot of people actually bought that John Stewart just to get this energy construct. Well, I don't know, man. This John Stewart figure is so rockin'. I can't imagine anybody buying this figure just for the energy construct because this whole guy is just it's just so well done. He looks fantastic. I will say the biggest low down dirty crying waste of an opportunity shame though is the fact that old Johnny doesn't come with a power battery. Fear not though because there is a wealth of other John Stewart Green Lantern action figures out there that you can pilfer their power batteries from. Personally, the one that I think fits the overall deco and sculpt of this figure the most is the one from the Mezco 112th Collective John Stewart. And if you're looking for something just and if you're looking for something just a little bit more folly overy, come on my dude. And if you're looking for something just a little bit more classic and simplistic, we have the DC Universe Classics power batteries. These, in my opinion, are the best of the basic looking power batteries. I never liked the ones that DC Direct made because the handles always fell off. Whereas the DC Universe Classics ones made by Mattel, they seem to be a lot more sturdy. So yeah, there are other options for a power battery if that is something that is bothering you, like it was me. Now also, even though I really like the head sculpt on this John Stewart, I know there are plenty of people out there that, the, you know, the stock one might not float your boat. So if that's the case, here's what he looks like with the NECA John Stewart head pegged on the shoulders there. And here's what he looks like with the Mezco 112th Collective John Stewart with hair. And here's what he looks like with the Mezco 112th Collective without hair. All right, so let's move on to the articulation segment. As usual with McFarlane Toys, there's going to be a fair amount. Although, I'm telling you, this is probably going to be a little bit restrictive. So first off, Jon Stewart's got a ball peg inside of his head, which allows for, I would say, an average amount of head articulation with this figure. It's enough, you're gonna be able to get him into some flight poses, especially when you add in this torso articulation, which he's got that roundy articulation up here in the body. And once you work it in, because it is a little bit stiff when you get them out of the package, it's actually not too bad. But I will say, as usual, having him bend down is gonna be a little bit tricky. We actually find that with many of McFarlane's figures. Superman's not so bad. While, for example, Flash is just downright useless in the bending down department. But there is that piece of waist articulation as well. And this is a soft rubber, so when you want him to bend down, uh, you've got this kind of moving out of the way, and that's about what you're looking at. But if you want him to bend back and get into a flight pose, uh, well, that's what you're looking at. Ooh, and that's what you're looking at. I didn't know that was gonna be a thing. And then you've got those rounded hinges right here in the armpits. You got the little butterfly mechanism there. You got a bicep swivel double jointed elbows, and you've got the typical rounded ball hinge in the wrist. At first glance, I thought maybe he's got some articulation up here at the top of the glove, but, but it's not articulation. It's just something that they fit over top of his wrist. And then below the belt, he can, oh, oh, that's as far as it goes. Ah, come on, let's, come on, let's see what you can get there. Oh my God, is that really it? God, let's, let's work it, work it, work it, boy. Mm, mm, mm. Nope, that's it. That's all I can get. Were the others like that? No, they can they can splay right out. So I suppose that is, for some reason, uh, fairly restricting. I'm not really sure why. The hinges in there should be opening, but if I pull them, I'm gonna break them. The nice thing is, you actually do get some of that rotating motion, which McFarlane's figures don't always have at the top of the leg there. And if they do, it's just not very effective. And then you've got double jointed knees, they crunch up amply, so no problem there. And then you've got the rounded joint in the ankle with the toe articulation. So, that's the sum total of articulation for old John Stewart here. And now that we've got Johnny on the spot, we can compare him to the NECA version in a classic 
Classic outfit, and then the DC Collectibles New 52 version, with a DC Universe Classics head. The DC Collectibles version ended up over here, on the DC Universe Classics version. And why don't we bring in the previous version, which is Mattel's other Jon Stewart, in the DC Multiverse line. And then just for funsies, let's bring in the Mezco 112th Collective version of Jon Stewart, and also the DC Icons. Two more of my favorite iterations of this character. Now, even though all of these iterations of Jon Stewart are pretty fantastic, some I like better than others, the McFarlane one is truly fantastic amongst a lot of them. I know that I give old Toddy Boy a lot of slack for the fact that he just seems to keep pumping out more Bat characters, but in his favor, to his merit, when have we ever gotten a line of DC action figures that is this sculpted and this articulated for the price range? I would say we never have. Let's face it, this Jon Stewart is 100% new tooling. It does make me wonder, though, what Hal Jordan's going to look like, because you can't just reuse this body buck for Hal Jordan. It won't work. I mean, I suppose they could make some use right here of the sculpted detail that goes down his abs and goes into a point and maybe paint that somehow to look like Hal Jordan's suit. I suppose that that could be the case, but I, I, I really don't think so. At least this torso right here. I really can't see that being used again on Hal Jordan. Anyway, whatever the case, I certainly think that this is a fantastic Jon Stewart action figure. It's probably been one of the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures that I've been the most excited about. You know me, I just want to build myself a Justice League. We seem to be getting all the Bat Family characters. You know, let's fill it out with some Super characters, and some Green Lantern characters, and some, some Aquaman characters too. And this Jon Stewart is a really good start. So if you see this guy out in the wild hanging on the pegs, I say don't hesitate, don't go home to think about it, just throw it in your cart and think about it later, because you're going to thank yourself. Future self is going to thank past self for throwing it in the shopping cart and running it through the self-checkout. Because once you get this guy out of the box, he's truly fantastic. Well done, Todd. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. You can leave a like on the video. If you're not subscribed yet, you know what that big red button does. And I will see you with the next one. Have a super awesome, fantastic DC day, everybody. And take care.